I learned about NoFap six years ago, and before I started this NoFap journey, I was just a kid PMOing every so often when I felt like it. But when I learned about NoFap, my use actually increased in terms of the intensity of use, in terms of the duration of each PMO session, in terms of the genres, the genres got a lot more hardcore. And I turned into this person who was constantly trying to quit PMO, but becoming increasingly frustrated and hopeless. Here's the thing that I've learned now that I'm 24, so six, seven years later. NoFap actually caused the PMO problem that I had. If I didn't learn about NoFap, I'm certain I would have just grown out of it. I've learned this myself, and I'm going to teach you how exactly this has happened, and my proposal as to how to undo the damage that not PMO did to you, but what NoFap did to you. Now, I don't believe that porn is addictive at all. I don't believe in the concept of addiction at all, and I'm really confident in this. NoFap, all it succeeded in doing is convincing you that you're addicted. You Once you buy into this concept of addiction, okay, you buy into the concept of addiction, what happens is you basically become someone who has this own mental barrier, this fixed belief in your head, and that is the thing that cripples you. The actual porn addiction itself doesn't exist as a real concept in the same way that Santa Claus doesn't exist as a real thing. Santa Claus, the idea exists. Porn addiction, the idea exists, but it doesn't actually exist in the real world. In the brain, it doesn't exist. It's an idea. It's a trap of your own making. You're trapped within a mental construct of your own creation, and I'm not blaming you here. NoFap is the thing that created it, because NoFap is the thing that is essentially spreading the myth that porn addiction exists. So NoFap comes under this recovery umbrella. I'm pretty sure you've heard of recovery. What this term essentially means is it means you have a brain disease and therefore you need to recover from it. Because you use porn so much, you fucked your brain up and now you need to recover, you need to mend that. And the way you mend it is through abstinence. And the only way to abstain is to overcome or sidestep or ignore urges. Here's the thing. Because addiction doesn't exist, you can't beat it because you can't beat that which doesn't exist. Okay? You've created addiction in your head, and now you're fighting it. It's much more logical, it's much more easy, it's much more straightforward to, instead of battling this self-created mental construct, just dispose with the mental construct altogether, and go back to when you were 14, before you discovered no fap, and you were just happily fapping away. And then, now that you're just happily fapping away, you can just reconsider, is this really what I want to do? And you can make the change, just like any other change in life. Okay? So for example, we went, you know, when we were kids, you watch cartoons, you play Super Mario, and over the years you just grow out of it. Super Mario isn't this addictive thing that's going to keep you constrained your whole life. It's something which you enjoy at the moment. You never view yourself as addicted to it, and because you never view yourself as addicted to it, you just move forward and figure out new things that make you happy. Funnily enough, I also got convinced I was addicted to video games, Dota 2, and Dota 2 specifically, which is essentially League of Legends, right? And because I was convinced I was addicted, I felt addicted. When you believe something, you feel it. If you believe you're a terrible person, you're going to feel like a terrible person, right? That makes sense. If you believe you're a good person, if you believe you're a moral person, you're going to feel good. If you believe X, Y, Z about yourself, you're going to feel X, Y, Z about yourself. And so if you believe that you're addicted, if you believe that you have addiction, you're going to feel addicted. Here's the deal. Here's what's actually happening, okay? You've been convinced of no fap. Let's say I'm 17. Let's go back in time. I'm 17 years old. I'm figuring, you know, I'm learning about self-improvement and I find I discover, you know, discover no fap, okay? Stumble across it. What's this no fap stuff? What is it? Porn addiction. Huh, okay. Well, am I a porn addict? You go on YouTube, right? You see people who are like, you are a porn addict. You've got dopamine in your brain. That is doing all of this. You see all of those fancy science and you just buy into it. Over time, you buy into it. When you're bought into the idea of addiction, you now view every action to do with PMO through this addiction lens, okay? So instead of viewing your desire for porn as a desire in the same way that I can desire hot chockey, instead of viewing it as just a benign, trivial desire, you're viewing it as a addictive compulsion. So before, if you didn't know about addiction, you would just view it as, oh, it's just a desire, I just want to do it. It would be that simple. But instead, you're now viewing it through this nofap lens, you're viewing it through this addiction lens, this recovery lens, where you're viewing it as a compulsion beyond your control, 
something that comes from the outside somehow, either through dopamine or through evolutionary psychology, the limbic brain, whatever, and it produces desire without your own volition. So essentially, what is a PMO urge through the nofapper's lens is actually just the same as any other type of desire. It would be strange if, when I had the desire to drink this, I interpreted that that desire as, oh, maybe I'm a part of Options Hot Chocolate Anonymous. Maybe I'm going to become a hot chocolate stranaut. Ludicrous. It's benign desire. It's just desire. It's the exact same thing. When you interpret it as an urge, in kind of like a post-processing way, a post-production kind of way, you're shooting yourself in the foot because now you're absolving yourself of the ability to actually deal with that. You've externalized the problem, even though it is you that's producing it, and therefore it becomes out of your reach. And that's what creates this whole confusion, this whole mess. If you own it and you realize, I'm the one with free will, and I'm the one who's the producer of desire, then it becomes something that you can actually deal with as an inside job within your own head. So, NoFap convinced you of these external desires which you must fight valiantly, and that's the other thing. A lot of these guys, me included, you view it like it's this valiant battle against evil, because of course the PMO industry is, you can understand why it would be evil, of course there's a lot of horrible stuff going on there, from my point of view anyway. So naturally you see it is a battle against evil, and then you view these urges as something that you must fight, and if you go on the forums, everyone's looking to fight urges, everyone's looking to figure out ways to sidestep them and deal with them and outsmart them. They're forgetting though that these urges come from within. We are the producer of them. And just as we're the producer of them, we can be the unproducer of them. Just as I like to drink this, if I learn to be happier without this, I'm genuinely happy without it, I can just change. And there will be no more desire, there'll be no more urges. There's no reason to have streaks, there's no reason to have discipline. It's not needed. You don't need it. You never needed it. And when you buy into NoFap, it just makes everything worse. Because you can't, how can you fight against yourself? How can you fight against a concept that doesn't exist in real life? It makes no sense. Now, the problem is getting even worse because, as I've said, the problem isn't porn. The problem is the NoFap industry. YouTubers, TikTokers, anyone on social media, the Reddit, which has over a million people on it. These are the places in the world where the message is getting spread. And the people who are spreading the message are doing it of their own goodwill. They're not trying to trick you. They're not trying to make the problem worse. But they are. Because when you believe this stuff more, when you go deeper into the rabbit hole, when you try and help yourself more using this method, you actually hurt yourself more. Because, and, and I'm the prime example of it. I'm the type of guy where I want to work really hard at stuff, right? I'm raised Asian and stuff like that. So when I battle... And when I go for something, I really try hard. I try to educate myself a lot. But when you educate yourself about no fat, you're educating yourself on that which is making it worse. So in this instance, your desire to improve yourself, your desire to grow, your desire to learn is actually shooting yourself in the foot. And the people who are completely ignorant, the people who are who don't know about no fat and don't care, seem to be the ones that can just change and just don't talk about it. They don't have a problem. They just live. And I'm sure you realised as well that as you were growing up, you kind of thought, oh, I'm the addict. You know, all my friends don't seem to have a problem. That's why I found NoFap. Because I wasn't, you, you think, right, you're an addict first and then you find NoFap. That isn't true. The truth is, you find NoFap and then NoFap turns you into an addict. It's shocking. I know it is absolutely shocking. And don't believe me, at the end of the day, I'm a young guy. I'm a talking head on the screen. I have all of my sources linked in the description, all of them. So you can just read all of that. You can binge read it all. If you don't like reading, I don't know what to say. Please read because <laughs> that's the only way you're going to get this information. And keep watching these vids because I'm going to be uploading a lot more. Subscribe because these this information really needs to get out there. There's so much noise on the internet with people in the NoFap space creating more and more content. And honestly, there needs to be a counter voice so that people can actually learn to quit instead of being brainwashed into going deeper into the rabbit hole and essentially becoming trapped as fuck. So subscribe and read the shit that I've linked below because that's all my source material. That's what's going to help you. Okay, don't take it. If you don't want to take it from me, I'm a young guy. Take it from the experts who've written this shit and you will learn a shitload and deconstruct this concept of addiction. When you don't believe in addiction anymore, it becomes a simple case of figuring out what you want to do in life and you can just move on. If I don't believe I'm an addict for hot chocolate, I can decide one day, 
huh, maybe I don't want to drink hot chocolate anymore. Maybe I don't want this sugar in my life. Maybe I'd feel better without it. And when I come to that decision mentally, it's done. It's done. And you can just change. You can build a new preference. You can learn to prefer not hot chocolate. You can learn to prefer no PMO. Genuinely. You don't have to battle and have this like boogeyman of addiction which is constantly haunting you. You can just be done, okay? It's not about recovery. It's about becoming recovered, okay? Subscribe and read the books.